the energy coming from the Vishuddhi Chakra shall split into two lines of energies as they make their way up inside the brain. One line pierces through the ear, rises up to the right hemisphere of the brain, Pingala. The other one pierces to the left ear, they are rising. Namaste. Welcome. Last time I talked about the three fundamental wonders of the energetic system. They're the Mula, Udhyana, and the Jalandhara. For today, I will be discussing the other subtle bandhas. Yes, we have more than three bandhas. And the subtle bandhas will happen or manifest in our practice once the primary bandhas become more developed. Of course, with our inner body becoming more open, the nandhas is becoming more open and sensitive and purified. And through the practice of meditation, stillness, with the supportive lifestyle suited for energy channeling, yeah, the subtle bandhas will essentially make their presence felt. Yeah, all of this happened to me first before knowing about them. So I will be approaching this lesson from that experience. It's more of a descriptive discussion of how they feel inside as they happen, together with the techniques which might help you develop yours. All right, the three fundamental bandhas, the Mula, Udiyana, and the Chalandara Bandha, they're the most active. They're the most dominant. Thus, they develop first. And they're quite easy to develop. Follow your teacher's program of the asana and the pranayama, meditation in Kriya, together with off the map of surfaces, they will organically manifest. So bandhas have to be very clear that they're not muscular contraction, they're not squeezing, they're not clenching, they're not tightening a certain region of our body. Although the preparatory requirements are, uh, most of them are quite physical, like asana or like specific actions of the hips, for example, Ashwini Mudra, or positions where we press the heel under the perineum to stimulate and tone and massage the muscles of the hips. Yeah, there are preparatory yeah, observances, so we can feel them internally. But once they happen internally, the body is not uh, involved at all. All right. So when the inner body becomes more open, you can feel the, the energy flow through uh, the hollow spots inside the body. And you will be able to direct you know, the energy to specific centers of the body called bandhas. All right. In every hollow spot of our body, we have a bandha present. Yeah. So we have more than three. Yeah. In every hollow spot in our body, there's a bandha. We have a bandha in the eye of the elbow. Banda behind the bottom of the gums, yeah, banda around the collarbone, yeah, either side of the thoracic cavity. Yeah, there are many bandas, but the three fundamental bandas are the most dominant. Right, because they are they are the most potent in collecting and gathering the energy to the midline. The bandhas, one of their functions is to yeah, collect the energy uh, lingering the peripheries towards the midline, yeah, towards the center. And then that particular banda will have a specific uh, function of lifting yeah, the energy up to the second or the higher yeah, banda, the higher region of our energetic system. All right, so as the bandas lift the energy up, yeah, they become more refined. That's one of their functions as well, to refine and process the energy so it becomes subtle yeah, and light. So when it finally enters the inner brain, yeah, it's uh, light enough that to cause um, absorption, but not too intense to overload our nervous system, so for our safety as well. So that's the function of the Banda, to prevent the energy from leaking out, to collect the energy to the midline, and to lift the energy up through the astral system. So the first uh, Banda, uh, which is the root Banda, is located down the bottom of the hips, in front of the tail, behind the pubic bone, higher up the perineum, right here, the hollow spot. Yeah, yeah. And the role of the Mula Banda is to unify the dense energy of the Kundalini so it can flow through the midline and enter the Shishumna Nadi, thus stimulating and irrigating and piercing through the first chakra of the Asa system, the Mula Dara chakra, which is located down the tail, yeah, around the hips. Yeah. Right. So the sensation of the Mula Banda is quite distinctive, it's quite pointed, yeah, especially if you do it with the Nadi Shodhana. And because in the Nadi Shodhana, you narrow the pathways, you can direct or flow the energy straight from the hips. And it's a thin line, like something is jumping in inside your hips. Yeah, it's quite distinctive, it's pointed, yeah, and it's easily felt yeah, when you do your Nadi Shodhana. Yeah, and of course, um, when you do your kumbakas, 
especially during the puraka uh, kumbaka, uh, inhale retention. As you suspend the breath, yeah, you can feel that point yeah, inside the hips close. Yeah, so that's the mula uh, bandha. So it collects the energy, unifies the energy of the Kundalini, so it can enter the first chakra of the Asa system through the Shishum Nanabi. Yes, at the Mula Dara Chakra. So higher up, yeah, the Mula Dara Chakra, yeah, above the Mula Banda is another subtle Banda. So this is now the first subtle Banda. It's located close to the sacrum, close to our genital region. It's associated with the second chakra, the Sajisthana Chakra. That is called the Swadhi Banda. And the Swadhi Banda is closely related to the organs of reproduction. In male, this is quite distinctive. You can feel the energy you know, start from the tip of the penis. Like the energy, the line of energy flows to the tip of the penis. It enters to the inner part of the reproductive system. You can feel it narrow to the backs of the sacrum right here. Yeah, yeah, like something is pressing there inside. Yeah, it's, uh, it's like a suction. It's like a vacuum without you moving your muscles. Your body is still, but since you're doing the technique of narrowing the pathway, especially the Nadi Shodha, you will be able to feel and uh, direct and channel the energy from the reproductive system towards the back of yeah, the sacrum, right here. And not only that, yeah, you will be able to yeah, collect the energy trapped in the fused bones of the SI yeah, to yeah, flow to the midline as well. So that's another distinct manifestation of the Swadhi Bandha. Because normally the hips and the sacrum, they are quite fused. They move as one. But when the Swadhi Bandha becomes active, you will be able to isolate and move yeah, the energy distinctively and separately from the hips, yeah, yeah, from the sacrum. Yeah, so something like that. Like the energy like here, trapped inside the SI joints, you will be able to draw the energy up from there and then towards the midline and then you will be able to lift the energy up now the second chakra of the Asa system, the Swadishtana chakra, thus piercing through that point inside the Shishuna Nadi. Yes, you can feel the energy here, yeah, along the sides, inside, yeah, the fuse bone of the SI. Yes, and together you'll be able to collect the energy using the Swadhi Bandha. All right, so higher up the Swadhi Bandha, yeah, so that's a function of the Swadhi Bandha to lift the energy further up so it can go inside the um, you know, core, yeah, the abdomen cavity, where the third chakra of the Asa system is located, the Manipura chakra. And associated with the Manipura chakra is another dominant Bandha called the Udhyana Bandha. All right, so the Udhyana Bandha, what it does when it's acted, it uh, opens up, stimulates, and irrigates the Manipura Chakra because the Udhyana Bandha shall collect the energy coming from the sacrum. Yeah, so from the sacrum, when the energy rises, the Udhyana Bandha collects it, thus piercing through the Manipura Chakra, the solar plexus. Yeah, thus the Udhyana Bandha, when it's active, yeah, when it's strong, yeah, expect the Manipura Chakra is also open and strong, yeah, the core region. Yeah. So what are the techniques for developing the Udhyana Bandha? When it comes to asana, elements which uh, promote dynamism, mobility, and flexibility of our hips. Yeah. Strength of the core. Yeah. Strength in a sense that you don't contract or tighten. It's more of a lighter type of strength. Yeah. So mobility. Yeah. Um, twisting, hip openness, forward bend, some arm balancing there. Something which promote lightness of the body, like you're lifting yourself off the ground. All right, pranayama practice, bastrika, you know, nadi shodhana, kapla bhati breath, ujjayi pranayama. Nadi shodhana is so powerful in developing the entire energetic and the system. For me, if there's one pranayama, you need to keep in your practice is the nadi shodhana, you know, with or without kumbhaka. Yes, so from the manipura chakra, the energy is being drawn up by the uddhyana bandha. So it can enter the thoracic cavity. Yeah. So to assess the Udhyana Bandha in lifting the energy up, another subtle Bandha is located inside the thoracic cavity, higher up the chest. Yeah. In the practice of uh, the Ujjayi Pranayama, I've talked about this. Yeah, when you do your inspiring the Ujjayi Pranayama, you will be feeling the bony part of the sternum. Um, likely become more energized inside like the energy is being drawn up there 
So from the bottom of the chest, it goes up here, like a gentle suction. Or right, similar to how the bottom bandas um, lift and process the energy and channel the energy. But it's not Udhyana Bandha because it's higher than the Udhyana Bandha. It's not the Jalandhara Bandha because it's lower than the Jalandhara Bandha. It's right here, now the bony part of the sternum inside, close to the heart. Yeah, and that Bandha is called the Sri Bandha. Yeah, I call it as well the Anahata Bandha because it's close to the Anahata Anahata Chakra. And the role of the Ribanda is again yeah, to collect the energy from the side, from the bottom, around the spot, yeah, towards the midline, so it can pierce to the Anahata Chakra and rise up through the throat region. Yeah, and one powerful technique for us to develop the Ribanda is through Ujjayi Pranayama as well as Nadi Shodhana with Puraka Kumbhaka or inhale retention. All right, yeah, mantras too are quite powerful in stimulating the ribanda, yeah, especially mantras which are humming, mantras which uh, produce low vibrational frequency. All right, so the ribanda there, you know, what it does, it lifts the energy up. So it can uh, rise to the uh, throat region where the Jalandhara Bandha is located. And the role of the Jalandhara Bandha is to collect the energy coming from the ribanda thus irrigating and piercing through the Vishuddhi chakra, the throat chakra inside, yeah, the neck region. So that's the purpose of the Jalandhara Bandha, yeah, as well as to refine and further calm and quiet down the uh, fire of the Kundalini. So it becomes subtle. Now, the energy coming from the Vishuddhi chakra shall split into two lines of energies as they make their way up inside the brain. One line pierces through the ear, rises up to the right hemisphere of the brain, pingala. The other one pierces to the left ear, yeah, rising up to the left hemisphere of the brain, ida, nadi. Yeah, so the energy coming from the throat will not go straight up to the Ajna chakra, they split into two. Good. And this is closely related to how they actually start from the base of the hips. Yeah, in the Muladhara Chakra. Yeah, because this is where the starting point of the three fundamental nadis are located, Ida, Pingala, and Shushumna, right inside the Kanda Nadi. But inside the hips, it's not too felt because the energy of the Kundalini, when it's still lingering in the hips, is quite dense. Yes. But the moment the bandhas have completed their processing of energy, they become thin and more distinct. That's so when they rise inside the brain, you can feel them separate here, right and left channels. Yes, two lines of energy going up and down here. All right. And inside the nasal cavity, behind the throat, higher up the nasal cavity, close to the inner brain, is another banda. It's called the Ajna Bandha, associated with the spiritual eye, the Ajna Chakra. The Ajna Chakra is located inside the inner brain. Externally, it's associated with the center of the eyebrows here. All right, but it's really inside. So if you form a straight line from the center of the eyebrow, one line there going inside the brain, and the other line starting from the indentation at the back of the skull, yeah, the meeting point inside is where the Ajna Chakra is. Right. Above the medulla oblongata, close to yeah, the inner brain, you know, where the pineal and the pituitary glands are located. It's actually inside the inner brain. Yeah, that's where the Ajna Chakra is located. Right. Although it's associated with the center of the eyebrow, but its exact location is really inside. All right. And behind the nasal cavity is a bandha associated with the Ajna Chakra called the Ajna Bandha. All right. So what is the function of the Ajna Bandha now? The energy flowing to the right and the left hemispheres of the brain yeah, is being you know, collected by the Ajna Bandha so the energy goes back to the midline 
where the Ajna Chakra is located because yeah, the end points of the three fundamental nadis, Pingala, Ida, and the Shishuna, intersect again inside the Ajna Chakra. And they meet again inside the Ajna Chakra, and that's the role of the Ajna Bandha to collect the energy there, yeah, and together this unified force again will rise through the Sahasrara Chakra, exiting the body. Actually, the crown of the head is just one of the exit points of the energy. So it's the complete rising Kundalini. But it can exit you know, from the Anahata, it can exit from the mouth, it can exit from the crown of the head, it can exit from the back, it can exit from the abs. I feel them all. You know, there are many exit points of the energy. But the complete one is when we're able to you know, fully lift the Kundalini energy up inside the Ajahn Chakra and exits the crown of the head. You will feel your hair hair rise. Yeah, and then something is like drilling inside. Yeah, and then the optical nerves are being stimulated. Yeah, I've talked about how we can uh, stimulate the Ajna Bandha as well by cramping your um, optical nerves. Yeah, especially during the Nadi Shodana as you inspire. Yeah, and like cramping the uh, optical nerves without your eyes moving. Right? And that's one way for you to stimulate yeah, and develop your um, Ajna Bandha. But the most effective, the most powerful is the Kachari Mudra. Because the Kachari Mudra, you're using the tongue itself you know, to create the suction, similar to how you uh, access the bandhas in the lower part of your body. And the Kachari Mudra does the work of yes, activating the Ashna Bandra in a conscious state. Actually, the tongue is a bandha itself, the, the tongue. Kriya, yeah, you know, the Kachari Mudra is a bandha itself. The tongue is a powerful uh, tool, a physical tool for us to you know, open up and flow the energy inside our body. So that's how the subtle bandhas assess the primary bandhas in channeling the energy, especially during meditation where we need to keep our body still and steady. The primary bandhas are just too active for absorption to occur. During meditation, they need to be fully relaxed and quieted down. So the inner system beyond the abundance shall manifest. All of this are essential byproduct of your inner body becoming more open. Your nadis becoming more sensitive, open and purified, together with a supportive lifestyle. But what will make it really happen in the practice is steadiness, stillness, and silence. We need to practice them. I'll see you in the next lesson. Namaste.